Do you want to learn how to give your photos, videos, and films a truly professional look? By the time this video is done, I'll show you how one simple camera feature can catapult your work into the big leagues by mastering what's known as depth of field. I've created many videos on improving the quality of your videos and your photography, and I'll link to those in the comments section below, and both during and at the end of this video, so stay tuned. If you want to learn more, remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that bell to be notified when I upload new videos. So by the end of this video, you'll have a full and thorough understanding of what depth of field is. Hi, I'm Jim Costa. I'm a videography, photography, and technology guru, and I created this blog to help you to become a tech-savvy senior. My tips and advice are useful to anyone, but my specific focus is in helping senior citizens to become more familiar with technology to improve and better their lives. If you have a camera question, leave a comment below. I do actually read all the comments that people leave, and yes, I do personally respond to them as well. Now, depth of field refers to the range of distances from the camera at which acceptably sharp focus can be obtained. This is a very important concept in, in video or film work for two reasons. One is you really need to understand depth of field to have full control over your focus. If you don't know how depth of field works, then sooner or later you'll end up with soft images that could otherwise have been saved. And two, knowing how to manipulate depth of field opens up a massive range of creative possibilities. Now depth of field will tend to extend one third in front of the focus point and two thirds behind. This zone of acceptable sharpness within a photo that will appear in focus will vary from image to image. Some images may have a very small zone uh, of focus, which is called a shallow depth of field. Three main factors that will affect how you control the depth of field of your images are the aperture or f-stop of your lens, the distance from the subject to the camera, and the focal length of the lens on your camera. In other words, is it a zoom lens or wide angle or something else? Now an important point to understand from this is, what does that one-third, two-thirds mean? If you were to focus right now on my eyes, on my glasses, so that my face is in focus, one-third of the distance between my eyes and the camera in front will be in focus, you know, to about here where my hand is, and two-thirds behind. So from behind my eyes, you know, into the background if I wasn't sitting in front of this background. And that is important. Now, in this case, it's a little, several feet, so it's a, a wide image. But if I were to move forward or backwards, out of that range of one third in front and two thirds behind, I would be out of focus. So if you keep that in mind, figure about one arm length in front and two behind from where I am, you'll understand how the distance or the range in which the entire image is in focus. As I said, there are three factors that affect your depth of field. Aperture refers to the access given to light from the lens to your camera sensors. The size of your aperture, which is the diameter of the hole in the center through which light enters the camera, controls the amount of light entering your lens. Using the aperture or f-stop of your lens is the simplest way to control your depth of field as you set up your shots. The closer your subject is to the camera, the shallower your depth of field becomes. Therefore, moving further away from your subject will deepen your depth of field or increase it. Focal length refers to the capability of a lens to magnify the image of a distant subject. Now this can get complicated, but the simplest answer is that the longer you set your focal length, the shallower your depth of field. So think of it like this. If you're using a, a pair of binoculars to look at a subject far away, say the, the trees far away and the, the horizon, or using a telescope to look up at the stars or the moon or something, that is a very long lens, sort of like using a zoom lens on your camera, so the very small area will be in focus. 
just the moon if you're looking at that or or just the uh, you know the mountains in the distance will be in focus but everything closer will not be through the, your binoculars so that's how a zoom lens works if you have a zoom lens and you're zoomed in very tight your depth of field is very narrow and only a very small area will be in focus conversely if you use a wide angle lens I, it, your whole image will be in focus. The whole thing from where you are almost like all the way to the horizon. How do you control your depth of field? Now, here's the important point. Depth of field is not constant. It can be varied using a number of tricks. Depth of field is basically determined by your iris setting. The smaller the iris aperture, the greater the depth of field. This means that the more light you have on your subject, the easier it is to focus. Naturally, in very low light situations where the iris is open wide, depth of field is significantly reduced and focus becomes quite a challenge. Factors which influence the depth of field are the lighting conditions, the camera filter, your shutter speed, your gain, which is electronic manipulation of the image, and your lens angle or the zoom that you're using. There are many reasons for wanting to alter the depth of field. Perhaps the simplest is to help you with focus. The more depth of field you have, the easier it is to maintain focus. If you need more depth of field, you can add more lighting. You can change or remove the filters to allow more light in. You can add some digital gain, but this will compromise your image because it's altering the picture electronically. Or you can reduce the shutter speed um, and you can turn it off altogether if you want. On the other hand, there are times when you may wish to reduce the depth of field. This is often because you want the subject to be sharply focused, but the background to be soft. This makes the subject stand out much more. To reduce your depth of field, you can do the following. You can add a neutral density filter. You can increase the shutter speed. This will work best when there's not much movement in your shot. You can reduce the lighting and open the iris. Oh, and be careful with this one because lighting is important and you don't want to reduce the quality of your pictures unnecessarily. If you take out too much light, your picture looks muddy. Now many consumer camcorders have a feature known as portrait effect or portrait mode or something like that. Activating this feature reduces depth of field by adding a little shutter, forcing the auto iris to open wider. As you might expect, you'll have more control over your images or videos if you select the shutter speed and iris setting yourself. Now if this is all making sense to you, put Tech Savvy Senior in the comment section below. Managing depth of field is one of the most important tools at your disposal because having tack sharp images is one of the most important factors to getting great shots. Knowing how to make the parts of your image you want sharp and the parts you want to be out of focus is a great artistic tool that can help you create great images and videos as well. Using a shallow depth of field is a good way to make your subject stand out from its background. It is great for portrait photography, for example. Shallow depth of field can also be useful in wildlife photography because you want the subject to stand out from its surroundings. You know, the rare animal sighting, for example. This is also useful because many wildlife photo opportunities are in low light situations because animals are nocturnal and increasing your aperture size will give you more light. Shallow depth of field is also effective for sports photography when you want to separate the athlete from the background to bring attention to them. The, re uh, the result of this should also help give you a fast enough shutter speed to freeze the action. In landscape photography, it is important to get as much of your scene in focus as possible. By using a wide angle lens and a small aperture, you will be able to maximize your depth of field to get to your entire sequence in the focus. My question of the day is this, how do you use depth of field to improve your photo and video work? Leave a comment below and let us know. Do you want to see more videos like this? Follow my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films for more. Think what you saw was great? Go ahead and like it. Do you have an opinion? Comment below. Now, do you know someone who could benefit from the information I provided? Then share the video. If you want to learn even more, 
then go ahead and connect with Jim Costa Films on social media and online, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, of course, and on the web. I currently have over 4,200 videos on my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, so feel free to check out as many of my other videos um, to get even more great tips and suggestions. Now I also have a new Facebook group, and that's called Video Producers and Content Creators. So look for that to connect there, join the group, and get even more pro tips and tricks.